want to share with you, um, you know, I, well, let me, be, let me begin by saying this. Um, you know, you have people who are, jealousy can be a big problem in relationships. I think, um, you know, I have heard of a guy uh, you know, he was married uh, with his wife. But every time the wife goes somewhere, and when she comes back, he would check the mileage of the car. So if she said she went to the grocery store, he calculates how far the grocery store is from the house. And he checks the mileage. So jealousy will lead people to do crazy things like that. But tonight, um, in order to help, I want to talk about seven truths, seven truths you need to know about jealousy. Seven things you need to know about jealousy. Number one is the definition of jealousy. So the first thing is the definition of jealousy. What is jealousy? Jealousy. Jealousy is the desire to keep what you have. So in that sense, jealousy, jealousy is different from envy. Because envy is, what, is when you want to get what somebody else has. But jealousy is when you want to keep what you already have. So that's the first point about jealousy. So it is different from envy. The second thing I'm going to mention about jealousy is this. And that may shock some people. But it is true. Jealousy is a legitimate feeling. Okay, Je jealousy is not necessarily bad in and of itself. Jealousy is a is a is a legitimate feeling. There is nothing that is inherently wrong with it. It is simply a feeling that we have that helps us to protect what we already have. So, uh, now. God is a jealous God. Uh, Are you guys with me? So not every form of jealousy is sinful. Otherwise, God himself would be sinful. And the Bible says clearly he's a jealous God. So jealousy is not always sinful. And it's not always bad. It's an emotion that God has given us that helps us to protect what, what is ours. So God is jealous of us because we belong to him and we are dear to him and he loves us and he doesn't want to lose us. As a result, he's a jealous God. He's not an envious God. But he's a jealous God. He want to keep us. Does that make sense? So it is the feeling of jealousy that moves God to protect his people. Because he doesn't want to lose us. Uh, we see Paul also had the feeling of jealousy. Um, in 2 Corinthians 11 verse 2, Paul says, I am, for I am jealous uh, for you with a godly jealousy. Oh, so there is something called a godly jealousy. Not every jealousy is a negative jealousy. Jealousy could be a positive thing. Paul says, I am jealous of you with a godly jealousy. So it is jealousy, but it springs out of holiness. And it springs out of a legitimate love. So that's the second thing. Jealousy is not always sinful. It's not always negative. So that's the second thing we need to know about jealousy. The third thing that we need to know about jealousy is that jealousy can be sinful. It can be sinful. And in that sense, it is not different from other emotions that God has given us that are human, but that can be sinful. Sadness is not 
uh, a sin in, a, in and of itself. In fact, anger is not a sin in and of itself. The Bible says, be angry and sin not. So there is something called a righteous anger. Even fear to a certain extent. Fear is not a, fear is a human emotion. And God gives this to us to protect ourselves. You know, um, I am not going to cross 95 while the cars are running at 60 and 7 miles an hour. And one of the things that kills, that keeps me from doing that is fear. Because I'm afraid that I'll get killed. But that fear helps me to be wise. So it's not a bad fear. Uh, it helps me to make the right choices by thinking about the consequences ahead of time. But uh, uh, like every other emotion that is not necessarily sinful but can become sinful anger is not necessarily sinful but if it's blown out of the proportion if it's done for the wrong, wrong reasons if we keep it too long then it becomes sinful uh, the same thing fear is not always sinful but if it paralyzes you to the point that you trust your fear more than you trust the promises of God then it becomes sinful. Uh, um, so the same thing with uh, uh, same thing with sadness. Sadness is not always sinful. In fact, Paul talks about a godly sorrow. So there is a sadness that leads us to repentance. And there is the sadness that is not of God. Uh, so it doesn't bring us to repentance. It simply makes us uh, just brood over the mistakes that we have made in the past. And it becomes condemnation. And at that point it is sinful. So like every other emotions that we have, jealous, jealousy can become sinful. So, uh, so there is positive jealousy and negative jealousy. In a relationship, you can have a legitimate jealousy. Um, if a husband has no jealousy whatsoever about his wife, uh, or the wife has no jealousy whatsoever about the husband, you would ask, uh, you know, do they care about each other at all? So whether you're here or you're not here, whether I have you or lose you, it doesn't matter to me. So there is something wrong with that, with that relationship. So where there is legitimate love, there is going to be a form of jealousy. But at the same time, you need to know that if it goes beyond certain points, then it becomes sinful. So the third thing is that jealousy can become sinful. So we have to be aware of that. The fourth thing that you need to know about jealousy and we got to be very careful with this, is that jealousy can become a door for the demonic. Jealousy can become demonic. It can become so sinful that it becomes a door for demonic for demonic spirits to operate. So that's why the Bible talks about in Numbers chapter 5 verse 14. The Bible talks about the spirit of jealousy. The Bible said if the spirit of jealousy comes upon him. So there is jealousy. And then there is the spirit of jealousy. When jealousy becomes sinful and is not taken care of, that jealousy can be can open a door for a demonic spirit to come in. Calls the spirit of jealousy. Now look at that verse again. It says, if the spirit of jealousy comes upon him. Every time the Bible talks about, for example, a spirit coming upon somebody, it means that it is a spirit coming from the outside and taking control of that person. 
So that's why you would often read, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. Or the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jephthah. So, so it usually talks about an exterior power that comes in your life to control you for a moment. It could be the Holy Spirit that seizes you for a moment so you can do His will. But in that case, it is a demon that seizes the person. So we got to be careful with jealousy. Um, je jealousy can open a door for a demonic. And when that emotion is not controlled in marriage, in, marriages, in relationships, uh, it can lead to um, severe abuse. It can lead to cruelty. It can even lead to murder. So the spirit of jealousy, when it opens a door, the first thing that it creates is rage. According to Proverbs chapter 6 verse 34, it will make you angry to the point that you experience rage. The Bible says for, the, for jealousy, for jealousy is a husband's fury. Therefore, he will not spare in the day of vengeance. When jealousy comes in, there's an anger that becomes rage and that does not spare. So jealousy can ushering rage. It can usher, in, it can usher cruelty. So, um, Song of Solomon 8 verse 6. So it talks about jealousy as cruel as the grave. So you know what that means. So it can lead to murder. We see that in Numbers 5 verse 14 also. It says, is the spirit of jealousy comes upon him and he defiles, etc., etc. And the next verse talks about murder. So, so jealousy can be extremely demonic to the point that it can destroy people. So that leads me to my fifth uh, point about jealousy. So having talked about jealousy, um, it can be positive, it can be negative, and when it becomes negative, it can become a strong force that destroys. I remember a couple of years ago, we had a Haitian actor. It was a young, it was a girl. I forgot which movie, Haitian movie she had done. Was that Le, Mira Le Miracle de la Foi? Is that The Miracle of Faith? A young woman, okay, uh, a young woman, beautiful woman, in the, in the young years of her life and she married a guy and the guy was 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 filled with jealousy and they were driving together in a car and uh, uh, you know uh, and, and, and the guy was so filled with rage that he stopped the car and took a club and beat that girl to death. That's the kind of thing that jealousy, when it is not controlled, when it becomes sinful, to the point that the demonic spirit comes in, it can be, uh, you know, it, 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 uh, you know, it can be cruel and it can lead to murder. So the question becomes, how do you handle jealousy? How do you handle jealousy? Well, first of all, uh, um, um, you know, we talked about jealousy becoming negative. And it, uh, and it becomes negative when you cross certain lines. It becomes negative when you go overboard. Okay, so, um, what's going to help you to... to, to um, address jealousy is that you need to answer the question. There, uh, uh, you know, there are, there are, jealousy can have two bases. There are two things that can generate, generate jealousy in a marriage, in a relationship, whatever it may be. Your jealousy or a person's jealousy can be based on on facts, facts, or fear. So the first thing we have to determine is what is feeding that jealousy. 
Is it fact or fear? Because both of them can fear jealousy. Can feed jealousy. So number one, you have to determine is it is there is is there a factual basis for the jealousy that you are experiencing? So that's the first question that you need to ask. So is it is it in your mind? Is it something that you just think is happening? Is it something you're assuming that is happening? Or is it something that is really happening? So that's very important. And you need to be able to establish the facts. And sometimes you may want to have you may need some help in establishing the facts. But you need to really make the difference whether it's just it's things that you're imagining or things that are really happening. Is that all right? Do you guys understand that? So that's the first thing, thing that you... Because sometimes we confuse what we think is happening with what's really happening. Whatever we have in our mind, we think it's reality. And in that sense, we may need to have other people help us to be balanced. Help us to be factual. Help us to be truthful. Because sometimes feelings can take over and we confuse facts with fear. So uh, when there is jealousy going on, you have to determine whether it's based on facts. And sometimes other people who are close to you, who love you, whom you trust, and trust you, can sometimes may be able to help you establish facts. So don't disregard what people may tell you. Because sometimes, you know, People around you may tell you, listen, um, you seem to have a problem with jealousy. Because they notice that you are acting up on things that are not true. So it's very important that you don't just brush them off. Because sometimes they may be help, able to help you to be realistic. So number one, determine whether it's based on facts or fear. Now, Number two, if you determine that it is based on facts, now you're going to need to, you're going to need to be, to know the healthy limit of that jealousy. If it's based on facts, uh, you know, uh, your husband is really talking late to that young lady at night. And it keeps on happening on a consistent basis. So now, if you establish that as truth and fact, now at some point you got to ask yourself, what is going to be the healthy limit to that jealousy? Number one, for your emotional health. For your emotional health. You see, the majority of sins that people commit are enjoyable. The majority of, of sins are enjoyable. Uh, uh, you know, uh, sin is enjoyable. It's just the consequences are not enjoyable. But usually sin is enjoyable. The person who's committing adultery, at the moment they're committing adultery, they're having a good time. It's just, it's just the consequences are going to be terrible. Even the person who's stealing, gets a thrill, you know, stealing. The person who's lying about his income, he's making 40, but he's saying that he's making 90. But while he's lying, he feels good about the lie. When they catch, when they catch him, that's a different story. Usually, sins are enjoyable. It's the consequences that are terrible. But there are some, there are some sins themselves that make you suffer. It's not the consequence of the sin that makes you suffer. The sin itself eats you up inside. There are some sins that are that way. And jealousy is one of them. 
Jealousy is one of those sins that you don't enjoy. You don't have to wait for the consequences. It doesn't take the consequences of the sin to destroy you. The sin of jealousy itself destroys you. Uh, 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 because somebody who's experiencing jealousy, you almost feel like you almost feel like you have acid inside of you. You feel that there is something eating up, eating you up inside. It's not an enjoyable uh, uh, feeling. So, if you are experiencing jealousy, you have to ask if it's based on facts. What is going to be? What are the healthy limits of that jealousy? Because I can't let somebody who's, you know, somebody who's being foolish. I can't let somebody who's doing foolishness and let that person destroy my life through jealousy. Because being jealous affects your health. All right, in Creole, we have something that says "femme qui jaloux pas gras." All right, it literally literally says "jealous women do not." I don't know. I don't know. I don't even know how to translate this. <laughs> what? What is that? You should say, yeah. All right. Go, no, I guess jealous women can't gain weight or something like that. Uh, you know, something. I don't know, whatever you are. But it means that you have no appetite. <laughs> you cannot eat. <laughs> Jealousy eats you up. <laughs> so you can't let somebody who's living a life of foolishness <laughs> affect <laughs> your health. <laughs> so you're going you're gonna to need to ask what's the healthy limit. <laughs> and secondly, I just told you that jealousy can open a person up to demonic oppression. Now, no matter how much you love a person, and no matter how dear a person is to you, but you should never open yourself up to demonic oppression because of somebody else. Are you guys with me? You should never let demons have access to your life because of somebody else. So you're going to need to ask what is the limit of that? What is the limit of jealousy? And as brothers in this place and sisters, wherever they are, you surely don't want to end up in jail because of somebody else. So you're getting jealous. You do something that you should have done. You end up in jail and he gets a great time with the woman. Oh, come on. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. She continues to live her life with her men, but you're in jail. So that jealousy is not worth it. So you got to know the healthy limits. If they are based on facts. So the, the, the second thing that can cause jealousy. But jealousy does not need to, base, to be based on facts. For it to exist. Jealousy can also be be based on assumptions. Things you think that are true, but that is not really true. Emotionally, uh, uh, the, uh, one of the roots of jealousy can be fear. Sometimes, there may be nothing going on. But it may be simply, you're so afraid of losing that person. You're so afraid of losing that husband. You're so afraid of losing that wife. And every time somebody talks to, 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 to them, talks to your husband, or talks to your wife, or talks to your daughter for that matter. Your father talks to your daughter. But there is such a fear in you of losing that person that you start imagining things. And you start imagining the worst. So in that case, the problem is not, is not the partner. The problem is actually yourself. And you need to know, uh, you need to address that fear situation. Know where it came from. 
maybe it was maybe it was it's based on the things that you saw when you were growing up maybe it's the model that you saw in your home uh, maybe your father was it very faithful to your mother and you fear that your husband will end up doing the same thing maybe you went through a relationship your, you had a relationship that ended the wrong way and your girlfriend ended up cheating with you with another guy or your girlfriend ended up or your or your boyfriend ended up cheating on you and you were hurt and at that point you said I'll never trust another man and I'll never trust another woman so that becomes the root of jealousy there's always a fear of losing and at that point uh, when you get to that point it's not honoring to God because at that point that person holds a more important place in your life than God are you guys with me? So God should be the top. God should be the one that you're attached to, the person you're attached to the most. No matter how dear your husband is to you, no matter how dear your wife is to you, you should be more attached to God than you are to your husband. And you should be more attached to God than you are to your wife. So you got to uh, look at the 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 the, the the root of that. And as I had said, people around you can help you in figuring out if your jealousy is based on facts or fear. If your jealousy is based on imaginary things. People who are around you people who are around you uh, will, uh, will be able to pick up on that. And they will know that it is imaginary. So, uh, so let other people around you help you. Now, if, if, if that's if you are the one who's jealous, what if it's the partner who is jealous? If it's the partner who's jealous, you have to ask yourself a question. Am I doing something? Am I doing something that is actually eliciting that jealousy? So that's the first thing. So if your husband or your wife um, uh, 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 you know, manifest jealousy, then at that point you gotta ask, am I doing anything that is causing that? Now, if you're doing anything that is causing that, then it might be wise to stop it. At least temporarily. Until we can get this thing figured out. But if your husband or your wife is not comfortable with a situation, is not comfortable with a friend, a special a friend of the opposite sex, your husband or your wife is not comfortable with that. It's very important that that you know you give it some distance until people are able to until you guys are able to figure out things. But it makes no sense to let and another person come and just wreck your marriage. Why lose your marriage just over another friend? Are you guys with me? And the good part of it, and the other part you got to pay attention to, especially the brothers in this place. Can I talk to the brothers? Brothers say amen. Amen. I want to hear the, the brothers, very important. Especially brothers in this place. If you are married, sometimes you may be totally innocent. But your wife, it takes a woman to see another woman. So your wife will see things miles ahead that you don't see. So sometimes even though it doesn't make sense to you, trust your wife's judgment, especially if that's not 
if that's not if jealousy is not part of her character it's not the type of conversation she raises every day if she's bringing something up even though it makes no sense to you listen for at least for a moment it will help you because women are able to see, especially your wife another woman who's got eye on you your wife is gonna see that person miles away somebody shout glory I remember when we, we started the church on 125th we used to have a uh, we have to have a prayer service Wednesday night on Wednesday night and there was a sister every Wednesday night she wanted a special prayer now no matter how much I prayed I would pray and sweat in the service but she wants a special prayer in the counseling room and one night Pat came to me and said you see that sister she's not looking for a prayer she's looking for attention somebody shared glory that, that's the role of the mother Ça that's the role of the mother she protects the house she protects the, protects the, protects the ministry somebody shared glory but when Pat said that, it made no sense to me. Because me, I'm seeing things from a pastoral standpoint. I'm saying I'm a pastor. And the lady saying she's got problems. So I gotta help her. So Pat told me that. And for some reason, I didn't pay much attention to it. And the next week, I was all, I was praying with that young lady again. And that Pat showed up. And she said, "You." Remember last week, so I passed. talked to you about that lady. I said, that lady is not looking for prayer. She's looking for attention. I said, Pat, you're taking things overboard. She said, it's very simple. You're not the only one who can pray. So next time, ask Sister Betty to pray for her. <laughs> So I said, I'm going to try it out. What do I got to lose? I ain't got nothing to lose. So I'm going to try it out. So the week after she came for prayer again, and I said, you know, I got some good prayer warriors who been through deliverance with us, and they're going to pray with you tonight. She took that prayer and never came back. <laughs> that, that was the last time. She came for prayer. <laughs> but it made no sense to me. So brothers in this place, sometimes your wife can pick up things from miles away. So pay attention to that. So uh, jealousy is not necessarily bad. It's not necessarily bad. It helps to protect what is dear to us and people who are dear to us. But when we take it overboard, it can be a problem. That's all that I'm sharing. I had to share tonight. Let's just give the Lord a round of applause. So. Look at the root of your jealousy. Is it fact or fear? Is it based on fact or fear? If it's based on fear, you need to repent. You need to repent of your fear. And you need to trust the word of God. Hallelujah. So you can grow in that area. Thank you for watching that video. If it was a blessing to you, click the red button that says subscribe. Click. Now. Now. Do it now.